morning, Ebenezer. It's once again, I'm thankful to God that I'm able to stand before you this morning to tell you what the Word of God says. But also, friend, that you continue to keep yourself safe. If you've been watching television, you've seen that the count is still going up especially in Alabama and also in Mobile. So please, please, if you have to go out, please wear your mask. The mask is protect you. I know a lot of folks do not put their masks on, but Ebony's, I'm asking you to please, please put your mask on if you have to, and stay that distance. Amen? Praise God. This morning I will be speaking to you from the book of Colossians. Beginning with verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3 through 8. I will not read all of those verses. I'm just going to read a few of them. And it does say it in verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you. Verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard, heard before it in the word of truth of the gospel, which had come unto you and it is in all the world and bring forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it. Let us pray. Our gracious heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you once again, Lord, to be able to stand before your people. And I pray, Lord, that you open up their mind in their heart, Lord, to receive the word of God. I pray, Lord, that you will be with us throughout this service. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. The subject this morning we're going to speak about, give thanks to God. Paul wrote to Colossians while in prison, perhaps in Rome. This morning, as each of you think of many blessings in your life, I want you to give thanks to God for the things he has done in your life. Despite the pandemic going on, bills got to be paid. I want you to remember one thing. God is still, listen to me, God is still in the blessing business. And we have so much to be thankful for. You see, Paul began in verse 3 here as, as he writes to Colossae, the church here, and he began it by saying this, we give thanks to God. And my Christian friends, as church members, you ought to always want to give thanks to God. Giving thanks is a continued thing that you and I ought to do. We ought to thank God every day for the many blessings that he stored upon us. And Paul is reminding the church of Colossae as he, as he writes this letter, we shall never fail to thank God. And my Christian friends, I don't want you to ever fail to thank God. When you get up in the morning, and fall on your knees, you ought to thank God. And then thank God for the fellowship of your church. You owe God to thank him for the many blessings that he's bestowed upon you and me. Prayer should be in our life like it was in Paul. Prayer was a Paul, was part of Paul's life. And my Christian friends, it ought to be a, a part of your life, in my life, every day. God blesses us that we ought to give thanks for. And not only that, Paul says this, which is so very important. He says this, look at verse 4, praying always 
for you. Oh, the man of God, life was tied up in prayer. And he always prayed because that was part of his life. And I want you to become prayer warriors. I want you to be able to pray. I want you to remember folks like Paul. He's remembering those in the church at Colossae. He remember them that I'm praying for you. And my Christian friends, with all that's going on in the world today, let us pray for one another. Let us know that God is watching all of us. Paul was giving thanks to God because of his faith in the church at Colossae. And the members there that he had faith that they was going to do what was right because of their love for God. And my Christian friends, you and all ought to do the same thing. You see, their, their faith is the knowledge that God is absolute in control of all situations and that he is working everything out for you and for me. And Paul wanted the church at Colossae to know that God is going to work everything out for them if you just continue to be what? Be faithful. Oh, and my Christian friend, when we're able to see the hands of God, we're able to grow stronger in our faith. And our faith become a blessing to those all around us. Listen to what I say. Our faith become to be a blessing of folks all around us. You know, my mother is gone, but I reflect back many times now, and I, I can see her walking in the kitchen and singing and cooking, and I, I think about how her faith has become a blessing to me in all of my years. I can reflect back how she loved God and how she was faithful to God, and Paul is telling the church here, be faithful. You see, Paul was thankful for their faith. He was thankful for their love. He was thankful for their hope. And these are the three principles of grace in the Christian life. Faith, hope, love, and the bottom line, to I add, you ought to have a prayer life. Amen? Amen. I tell you, my Christian friend, faith make it possible for our Christian walk in our daily lives. Our faith make it possible for our walk in our daily Christian lives. Yes, he says this, and he goes on, and then what he says in verse 4 is he says, we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy. He's heard about it. You see some, but let me tell you this, if being a child of God, if you just walk right, talk right, live right, somebody will hear about it, and your faith will go ahead of you. Oh, I don't want to act like a wild man, but great God of mine, your faith will go ahead of you. You see, as I say, faith make it possible of our daily lives with that Christian walk. Our faith is the hope what must stand with Jesus Christ alone. Yes, you and I sometimes must stand alone because of our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, he said, since I've heard of it, not only that, but he says this here, Look at verse 4. Look at it. He said, and of the love which you have to all the saints, my Christian friends, he's telling all of us, and I'll tell you, we ought to love the saints. We ought to love the family, what, of God, because they are what, are part, what, they are part of us. And hope which is laid up, he's talking about in heaven for us, but you and I, I ought to never forget to give thanks to God. How can you go about every day 
and not giving thanks to God? How can you wake up every morning and not give thanks to God? How can you go about your daily tasks and never give thanks to God? And some of you have never even lost a paycheck but this ep epidemic. Some of you have been blessed. You've not been laid off. And those of you still ought to give thanks to God because he's still in control of the situation. Oh, my Christian friend, I tell you, oh, the faith of the church brought Paul to what? To give a thanksgiving. And I mean to tell you, my Christian friend, your faith ought to be a thanksgiving to God. When you look all around and see what have happened in your life and in my life and how God is still taking care of us, we ought to be so thankful for that, my Christian friend. Look at this. He said, now, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Huh? That's faith, hope, and love, which is laid up for you. He said, therefore, you heard before in the word of the truth of the living God. What? You heard of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And my Christian friends, you cannot be good news because that and the good news is about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, a strong faith is transformed every day to every area of our lives. And I am so thankful to Paul, my Christian friend, for his love for the church at Colossae. And I tell you, I am so thankful to God that I'm alive today. I'm so thankful to God that you trust him in your everyday activity. I am so thankful to God that you walk by faith and not by sight. I'm thankful to God that you're going to lean on the everlasting arm of God and you're going to thank God even when things are not going your way. Because you know one thing. God is still in control of you and also of this world. Where there's true faith, there's love. You didn't hear what I said, did you? Where there's true faith, there's love in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And my Christian friends, I tell you all of this, hope speak of things to come by the time that it will come. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will continue to trust God and lean on his everlasting home. And like a ch church in Colossus, I, you gather around and do what they worship all to a true and a living God. And Ebenezer, I want you to do one thing. Never forget to thank God for what he's doing right now in our lives. Amen. And I pray this, that you will continue to trust God. Amen. Because you and I have the hope for what? Eternal life. For the children of God, our hope is, is far greater huh, than the form of this world. And my Christian friend, our hope in Jesus Christ is soon coming back to this earth. And you want to be ready. And you want to be thankful to God that you was able to rise today. You want to be thankful to God that you're able to listen to this message. You want to be thankful to God for answering your prayers. Oh, my Christian friends, many things could have happened to you, but by the grace of God, you have kept the faith. You kill, you're still serving. You're still doing. You're still praying. You're still giving thanks to an almighty God. And I pray that you continue to do that in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you today. May God keep you. Here's our prayer.